goes. Here comes everyone. It's TMS PM in three, two, one. Coming up on TMS PM. Okay, Justine, give me the results. It's all documentaries now. App time and your Twitter questions and more on this episode of the Morning Stream PM. This is the Morning Stream, but it's not in the morning, it's at night. TMS PM. everybody and welcome back to TMS PM, the Friday afternoon edition of the show. It's December 14th, 2018. Scott Johnson, Brian Ibbett, hello. Welcome. Hello, Scott Johnson. How are you? Well, you know, it's been a weird week for us here. The Johnson It's been a plan. weird uh, last uh, 48 hours for you. I mean, uh, yeah. And when, let's get people caught up because there's going to be people wondering why, why we didn't have a show yesterday. And Yeah, so Wednesday when I got up, uh, and I tweaked my back. I didn't think too much about it because it didn't seem horrible. It seemed like it was manageable. I knew the familiar feeling. I get this every few years. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mom does too. I think it's genetic. But anyway, I tweaked it and went, oh, that's no good. But then the show was fine Wednesday. But as Wednesday crept along, got worse and worse and worse as the night went on. And by the time it was like bedtime, I was miserable pain in my back. And I couldn't hardly move. And I thought, well, all right, a good night's rest, that'll be fine. Get up in the morning, hit T a TMS, hit the day hard, let's make this happen. Woke up on Thursday morning, couldn't get out of bed. It was so bad. Like, couldn't budge out of my own freaking bed. What kind of life is that? Oh. That's no life. It sucked. No life at all. No. That's the life of a Netflix uh, Netflix and chill day, though, is what that, what that would be. Kind of, but I hate that because I feel like I got too much to do. So I yeah. did rest for a while, but then I tried to get up. And toward the end, you know, middle of the day, it got better. And then it kind of got bad again. And then last night. So, like, worse in the night and worse in the mornings. So this morning, pretty bad. I still forced myself uh, to finally get crap going. But right now, I'm in, a, I'm in a position that is just okay. It's just like, if I hold, if I hold this, it's all right. But if I move oh, too much geez. out of this out of this position or twist too hard or anything, just freaking zings. So anyway, I've had it before. Got the whole got the whole uh, you know icy hot here and there, and the freaking ice packs and the heat heating pad and the back and forth and whatnot, and taking the ibuprofen and blah blah blah. It's all mm -hmm. fine. I'm not here to complain. Uh, I am here to tell you though that the worst part of all of this was in the middle of all this. We're still putting floors in and painting and sanding and doing right. stuff, and I'm now useless in that regard because I can't bend down to do anything. And so I'm useless. I can't carry anything. It sucks. So Kim's like shouldering all this stuff. And then right in the middle of it all, we get uh, we had a forever appointment to get the dog uh, Boomer into the, uh, the, the uh, what do you call him there? The vet veterinarian. Mm -hmm. And the reason sure. you do that, that's when you don't eat meat, right? Veterinarians, they don't eat meat. Is that the deal? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, vet, 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 uh, vegetarians. Vegetarians, exactly. Anyway, we get her get her to the vet finally because she's been limping on her back leg and it seems to have gotten worse and worse and worse. Uh, over a couple of weeks' time, we thought, well, let's just get this thing checked out. They do an x-ray. Her hip is popped out. Her, her leg is removed from the hip bone. Oh, just dislocated. Holy yeah. cow. Dysplasia. Ooh. Hip dysplasia oh. is what they call it. Oh, dysplasia. Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's no good. Oh, man. Big dog, bigger dogs get this all the time. Like yeah. you get labs or a notorious Ger uh, German shepherds, not German shepherds. What's the, um, uh, which is German shepherds too. Yeah, German shepherds but also. Golden retrievers that are known for getting a lot of hip dysplasia. And I, ironically, well, it's not ironic, I guess. I don't know. I'd have to call what's her name up in Canada and see if this is ironic or not. <laughs> But uh, she's hey, Alanis, is this ironic? <laughs> she is. She has definitely got some uh, German Shepherd in her. She's definitely got some Golden Retriever in her. So she's probably got the best of both worlds of of bad hip removal, whatever. But here's the problem: it didn't happen from just naturally nothing. She was wrestling with Izzy, the pit bull, who's the mm -hmm. sweetest dog ever, but too big for her own good. And uh, right. when they wrestle and play, she's very heavy. And if she falls on you and your legs in the wrong position, boop, out pops your uh, mm -hmm. your freaking femur bone or whatever the dog version is. And that's what happened. So we got these x-rays back, and it's separated by like an inch in there. And uh, the doctor's like, well, here's the problem. Since she's a puppy, she hasn't had time to build up the stuff you need that to, to normally can pop it back in and probably be okay. It'll heal. Uh, you splint it up and stuff like that. But he says it's not going to probably stay there. You have about a 20% chance of the bone staying where it's supposed to. So the only other option is surgery, which involves a screw. 
uh, in the in the from the bone to the hip there to hold it there, and it's about eighteen hundred dollars, oh which is you know not money I was planning on spending in the middle of doing flooring right. and Christmas time and everything else. So, you need a three D printer, a new hip. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Do you have enough filament left to throw one of those together? I don't know. It finished. I I can't. I have the door closed, so I can't look in there and see if there's any filament uh, mm. uh, left going in there. But uh, no, I, I I'd, I'd have to use brand new. I'd have to use my green roll of filament. Mm-hmm. So bright green, yeah. bright green hip for uh, Jim Rainer, the female dog. Maybe a, a different dog. This is Boomer. Jim Rainer. Oh, I'm sorry, fine. Boomer. Yeah. I keep saying Jim Rainer, and it's Boomer. Yeah, yeah Jim Rainer's fine. She's the pup. The Jim, puppy. Jim Rainer had a fe- had a had a similar. Uh, thing happened like a, a play time with izzy landed on her leg limped on it for a bunch of time almost the same injury but she healed up because she's made of sinew and rock hard muscle for some reason that her particular mm-hmm. breed is like monstrous that way so she's fine so anyway we got to put a screw in there 1800 freaking dollars oh, who knows gosh. how long to heal and wear braces and have a cone on and all this bull crap all right now it just couldn't be all the, the back and that and the stuff it's just all piling up man no, no, right. no. Uh, the floor, the back of the dog. <laughs> yeah. The, unless and I, Christmas. Unless I can roll a D20 down her throat and have it come out her butt, I'm not interested in this whole thing. <laughs> so, anyway. Don't need any botched surgery. <laughs> that That is why there was no TMS Thursday yesterday, and I apologize uh, greatly for that. We, we let everybody know, of course, but yeah. still bummed me out. Um, my sister had a real fun time with it because she doesn't seem to have this tendency. But she knows that it's probably genetic from my mom, and that just skipped her, and so she's she's really enjoying the fact that it's only me and not her. So that was a fun discussion, and everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Look, by Monday, I, it'll probably be just fine, and every, it's all good. Oh, and to top that off, we're having the worst, most impossible time trying to figure out a way to watch a sneak in film sack thing, because we got oh, one of right. us in Hawaii, we got the other uh, three are here, but we all have crazy schedules with various yeah. parties. I've got too much going on. Right now, we're hosting a party here at the house. The stuff's not even done. I don't even know why we're doing that. We should have shoved it <laughs> off to one of my sisters. Might still have. You might want to with your back situation. I mean, you don't want to, you know, tweak it any further by, honey, can you bring in the roast from the garage? Yeah, maybe. I'll, maybe I'll talk to her. About it. I mean, tonight, we're supposed to go to dinner with Corinne and Jason, and we'll, maybe that'll come up. But uh, anyway, yeah. it's just been stupid. So forget mm-hmm. about me. I want to know how your weigh-in went today, Brian. Let's check in. It's PM. It's checking sure. on time or checking on right. Brian. That's right. Friday time. PM. Yeah. Uh, I had my weigh-in this morning with uh, with AJ. Actually, AJ was getting ready for what, figuring out what they were going to talk about. There was a new woman there who did my weigh-in. I didn't recognize her, but uh, so she uh, did. She look like anyone famous? She didn't. Okay. No, she looks like a generic soccer van driving lady <laughs> mm, great that's not as good as justine bateman in my opinion but uh, not not as good as justine bateman yeah. stepped uh, took my shoes off took my jacket off should have worn lighter pants wore a lighter shirt stepped on the scale boom 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 brian gained two points oh. oh we've hit that we've hit that not plateau but we've hit that area where it's harder to lose it, right? It is. Yeah. It is. Well, and that's that's been the case. Like, if you look at my, um, if you look at the, the kind of the spreadsheet that you get in the app, it's like, all right, um, nine pounds the first week. Mm-hmm. Oh, then I gained 0. 0.6 back. Then I lost 1.4. No, then I lost uh, 2.6. Then I gained 2.4. Then I lost 8.2. Mm. It's like, um, I'm gonna roll you over. know, at least it's larger drops than it is gains sure you know sure uh so i gotta look at that as kind of the positive this thing and you know what this last week i thought i was really good about what i was eating but what i didn't do was track it so if you don't track it it feels like "Mm, you know what i call just have one of those i'll have one of those meringues yeah Ah, i won't put in the app don't worry about that or i'll have you know i'll have french fries with the uh uh, the the chicken breast that uh, that I ordered at the place mm-hmm. with the salad. It's like, oh, let me just get fries. Yeah, I'll just eat half of them. That's yeah. all right. Yeah, then you'll be okay. Sure. And that's and that is the the key right there. <laughs> you can't do it. You just can't. Uh, you have to track it. Yeah. Because it's it's accountability. And but you don't see you hate that stuff that don't you hate in. when you make something at home? Here's what I hate about tracking on any app. Yeah. It, you're at home and you're making a thing out of uh, out of raw ingredients. Now the math right. kicks in cuz you're like, okay, how much lettuce is that? And how much of that stuff is right. there? And did I put that much of this? Instead, you go to like a restaurant, it's like, ah, the Big Mac is this many, boink, and right. you're done. 
<laughs> right. Well, at home, it's it's a lot easier at home because we're being a really good about when we go to the store to buy those ingredients. We're using the barcode scanner at the grocery store and saying, "Oh, this is the best one to buy," and then it's kind of already in its recently viewed memory. And so when you start typing in、uh, "budig turkey slices,"、mm-hmm. then it's like, "Oh yeah, okay, those are you know, for every slice of turkey that you put on a sandwich, it's going to be this many points. For every slice of bread that you got that you picked up at the store, it's it's、uh, this much. It's."、Um, You know, it's it's work, but it's the weeks where I do the work, where I like put in the things that I'm that I'm eating, are the weeks that I lose weight. And、right. it's usually after like, all right, I lost weight. I don't have to. I don't have to pay attention. I don't have to enter things into the app. Oh no, you do. You absolutely need to.、Uh, on those weeks after you lose weight, those are probably the most important weeks to track because you feel like you're you're invincible. It's like, oh, all right, well, I can afford to have that extra. Slice of cheese on my sandwich or yeah, whatever. That donut so, hole, exactly. Exactly. So, you fun, know, fun a, stuff.、Uh, But is she is Justine Bateman coming back? I mean, obviously, this is where I'm focused. Is Justine Bateman? Yeah, yeah. Well, she's she was there. Like、okay. she was.、Uh, I, would, I talked to her. I said, "How you doing, AJ? Oh, good. Just looking over the because basically she's looking over the notes for the things that they're going to be talking about.、Mm. So she's prepping for their their."、Uh, What、meeting. do they call that? Are you staying for the session today? It's like、no, a little. It's like a little、session. AA meeting for.、Uh, food, kind of is, yeah. Yeah. Did you stick、My、around for that? Bright a bit like a donut. No. <laughs>、um, it's too. I don't like it either. It's too touchy feely for me. And and somebody wrote in and said that they they they're doing the same thing, and it's really just place by place. This one may be touchy feely, but there are other.、Um, there are like two other locations that are actually closer to me. But I go to this one because the hours are better. If I change things around a little bit, I could go to one of the ones that's closer to me, and it might not be as, as well. How did you feel this week? And what was something you did that made you proud?、Mm. Well, what was something you did that made you disappointed? Right. And、uh, I couldn't. I, I'm with you, by the way, on all this. Not my、yeah. bag of chips.、I'm、not really、yeah. into that.、Uh, well, that's. I, I did the first week. Said, all right, this part of it's not for me. I'll、yeah. take the, I'll take the accountability <laughs> of stepping on the scale and having Justine. Tisk tisk tisk, or give me the side eye, or high five me, or whatever. Yeah, like you're like you're Alex Keaton, and you're in trouble. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> the Mallory, <laughs> exactly. Yeah.、Uh, so, all right. Well, good. Good job. Well done.、Uh, tell me about this documentary you saw. I'm in the mood for these lately, <laughs> so I kind of want this. I guess. You know what? And and maybe it was the half a small popcorn, the the pop the popcorn that Tina and I shared. And we all know that a small popcorn at a movie theater is a medium popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. And half a medium popcorn. Maybe that was the whole problem. But、um, we went to,、uh, and the reason I'm using this for a recommendal now and not on Wednesday is for two reasons. Number one, it's not streaming, so you're not going to be able to see it、uh, streaming, at least not for a while. Yeah. Number two, you've only got one more chance to see that, and it's this coming Tuesday.、Um, what I saw was a documentary in the,、uh, like it's the、um, Fathom events at your、uh, movie theaters, right,、oh, where they do the.、Yeah. One or two nights only, kind of things,、mm-hmm. and this was the Miyazaki film.、Uh, I think it's called The Unmade Man or the Shoot. What is it called? I want to make sure I get the name right. It's an animated thing. It's not. It is a. It's a documentary about about、um, him about Miyazaki. Miyazaki. Really? Yeah, and it's called The Neverending Man. The Neverending Man. The Neverending Man. Man.、Mm. Oh. <laughs> this is、uh, so. This is about. This started、uh, filming back in 2012 when he announced his retirement, or 2013, whenever it was. Yeah. And he just can't sit still. He's like, no, I have to keep working on stuff. So, about a year later, they he's just kind of sitting there working on his sketchbook, and he's working on this little caterpillar creature,、mm-hmm. this little uh, uh, fuzzy black caterpillar named Boro.、Mm. And he's like, yeah, it's just, it's, you know, I just don't have it in me to to do another big feature film, but I just really like this little character. And if I stop drawing, then I feel like I'm gonna just wither up, and I'm I'm already an old geezer. And he uses, it's all in, it's all subtitled, but he uses the, whatever the Japanese word for geezer is. Oh, great that's translation! I want to learn what geezer is in Japanese. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And they show Studio Ghibli, and it's just like all of these these light tables. 
uh, these great desks with these light tables built into them, and it's all empty because studio once once he retired, basically Studio Ghibli stopped producing yeah. uh, movies. Yeah. And uh, then some guys from a uh, CGI uh, animation studio approach him, and they say, "Well, what if we could work on this with you and do CGI that looks like your hand-drawn work, but is really done with computers, and we can animate a lot of the stuff that you that you want to do?" Yeah. And it's basically that the movie is that process of him learning the CGI side and the CGI people learning his techniques and tools and creating this little short of this this caterpillar uh, named Boro and how it gets around and stuff like that and, and what it looks like when it's moving and what the story of its birth is and stuff. It is fascinating. And if you have any interest in Miyazaki from Spirited Away and My Neighbor Totoro and Howl's Moving Castle and all those great great movies this is such a great insight into who he is and how he thinks and just watching him draw is fascinating and watching him like do the the onion skin paper Mm -hmm. oh yeah and draw the thing and then lift it up and then draw and then lift it up and make sure that the two cells back and forth uh, old school man old school it it is really cool and so it's got another they've got one more showing basically it's a two-night event uh the first one was the 13th. The second one is the 18th. So it's this coming Tuesday. Mm. And it's at theaters all across the country. And it is it is really good. All right. I'm in. Uh, I had no idea this even people, existed. Yeah. I don't think people, you know, if there's any complaint, it's that it ends a little bit more suddenly. It, it ends, uh, the movie ends more suddenly than you'd expect. <laughs> hmm. That's surprising. Let's see here. Oh, The Never Ending Man in theater view show times. Let's see if it's around here. 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. That's pretty good. Ah, closest to me is L.A. Boo! Oh, really? Boo! Bummer. Is there a way to stream it? Let's see. I'm surprised there's no... God, there were like five in, in Denver. Yeah, that's weird. Maybe they're touring. Maybe it's a one I... Or, a, you know... I, mean, I don't know. Maybe they... Oh, maybe. I don't, I don't know how they do that stuff. You're not using a, a VPN, are you? That's like disguising your... No. Your location? Okay. Because no. I had to... It pulled up for me, uh, Oklahoma. Oh, and I had to actually like. Do you have a VPN? Physically going? say where 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 I was to. Well, yeah. Let's see. Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday. Oh, <laughs> hold on. Uh, unrelated thing says never ending man ends suddenly. It's, yes. It's... <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. I've uh, I feel the same way about a couple of documentaries I just watched. They end too quick. Something's weird about the way they end. That one with yeah. uh, Elvis and and Dick Nixon is Nixon? ends uh-huh. so suddenly. I don't understand why. Uh, that's a new thing. Maybe it's a new style. End it before people want you to. I don't know. Right. Right. F- very yeah, odd. Big year. Big year. Seventy four says that they do happen in Salt Lake City. It's Fathom events. So. Oh, okay. Well, they should. If it's Fathom, they should. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Well, then why are they not? Uh, I don't know. Just watch is where I'm looking. That's probably the wrong place to look. Oh For, yeah. No, that's. Uh, they they are supposed to show local theater stuff, but they're not showing it to me. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. So who knows? I don't. I shouldn't use it for that. Uh, all right. Anyway, well, that's anyway, great. It's very good. And there's a Japanese guy in there who's wearing a uh, one of the animators, the CGI animators, is wearing a hurricane towing uh, from Hurricane Utah sweet. T-shirt. Sweet. And I was like, I was like, look at this guy. What's hurricane. Up with this guy? It's like 40 minutes outside of St. George. Almost. Well, actually, it's even closer than that. It's like an hour from Vegas. This weird town. With right. Nobody in exactly. it. Exactly. That's that's hilarious. Now I have to watch it. Now it's yeah. now it's required of me. Exactly. So All in right. the in the chat room, I've posted a link to where you can buy, where it like shows you where the tickets are, um, and you just have to, uh, just have to enter in your zip code or something. And oh yeah, here you. we go. South Jordan. Let's go. Uh, it says uh, we searched for you, and there aren't any show times there yet. Try another location. Um, how about mm. try your zip code? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Let's try that. Uh, South Jordan. Hmm, same. Hmm. Let's try Salt Lake wow. City. Uh, yeah, the closest it's saying is Boise, Boulder, Fort Collins, Lakewood. Man, that's crazy. Vegas, yeah, you're Denver. getting all of mine. I'm looking there. There are nine, you know, within 40 miles of where I'm at uh, for Tuesday. 
I really huh. want to see this. Today. Bummer. I really want to see this. Now you've got me. Now there's two problems. It's playing hard to get, <laughs> and it looks good. <laughs> well, it'll be, it'll be uh, streaming soon, hopefully. Oh, okay. Sorry, I had to shift. I make funny noises when it hurts. Should probably yeah, sure. warn, warn people of that a little bit. Uh, all right. Well, that's all good and well, and well and good. Yeah. Let's now play uh, a little of this right here. App Slappy. All right, it's time to talk about some apps. It's what we do on the PM edition of the show here and there. Uh, we like to talk mm -hmm. about different apps we've been messing with and what we think of them. I'm very happy to report that they finally made a Supercell game I like. Now, you know who Supercell is, right? Is that familiar Supercell. to you? Think of no, uh, Clash me. of Clans. Think of... Uh, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, So the company... I was thinking it was a game called Supercell. But yeah, the, the company that... that uh, they made the, that. The gaming company Supercell. Yep, yes. they made that. Then they made the very popular... Uh, what's it called? Clash Royale. Clash Royale, yeah. Uh, which is still very popular and does quite well. And I, I, I admired what they did with those two games and all the copycats it created. I think it's a big deal that they did that on mobile. However... Mm -hmm. Not really my bag of cheese. Uh, the, either of those two games, they didn't really hook me for very long. But I found one that's totally got me in its in its grasp, and it just came out. Ooh, okay. So I shouldn't say I found it. It's like a huge release, and a lot of people know about it. But it's called. It found you. It found me. Very good. Very well said. It's called <laughs> Brawl Stars. Okay. Brawl Somebody Stars. Somebody wants. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. <laughs> I moved weird. Hold on. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. It's okay. Usually laughing's not a problem, but I moved funny. Oh, there we go. Okay. We're back into this low center of gravity. Uh, anyway, Brawl Stars, it's called. And uh, anybody who cares anything about mobile gaming has probably already heard of this, and they're like, oh, whatever, Scott, this is old news. Uh, but it was news to me. I hadn't followed um, this, so I didn't know it was coming. And, uh, and it just so happens that it's kind of right up my alley. Now, it's kind of this weird combination of a number of things and that's kind of what they do right supercells always yeah. their games have always been like well what if there was cards and what if there was a little rts in there and what if there was a little bit of tower exactly. defense like all these different uh, not genres but but things they've lifted from other game ideas and then kind of mush it together and make it work this is like that uh, as well the closest i can compare this to would be um comparing this to um, if a MOBA got in the back seat with uh, with a with a uh, with a battle royale game and they had a little baby, <laughs> this is kind okay. of this is kind of that game. Um, I'm hooked by just this this animation, the the trailer for it with. Uh, it's pretty good. You know this this McCree redheaded McCree dude yeah. <laughs> without the hat running yeah. around, walking around, checking out town, seeing what's what. Here, Chad, I'll blow that up so you can see it. Uh, Anyway, the game is basically you're in an arena of sorts. Uh, you have characters that you either already have or have to unlock. And then you run around this arena and you fight other players on the opposite team. It's four on four. And uh, and you can go in there with a, just yourself and it'll finish out a group or two of you and it'll finish out a group, whatever. But Or is it three on three? I'm sorry, three on three, not four on four. Uh, you go three on three in this thing. And uh, you kind of play like a MOBA. You run around with a virtual joystick and you, you have uh, special abilities and you have a regular weapon. Uh, one of the dudes is like a little Day of the Dead Mexican uh, little guy. Like Coco. Looks like a guy from Coco. Yeah, a little dude from Coco. And he his <laughs> job is to heal. He has some healing abilities for his ultimate. Okay. Um, there's uh, you know different, different characters have different abilities and different strengths, different weaknesses, that sort of stuff. And you run around in these arenas and you try to kill each other. But also the main goal is these uh, this little hatch in the middle of the thing is pooping out these gems. And that's where this thing kind of sets itself apart. This could have just been a, hey, let's fight each other game. And whoever left standing wins. It doesn't work like that. Sure. Like a top-down Fortnite, basically. Exactly. The way this yeah. works instead is it poops out these gems. You pick them up. It shows over your head how many of the gems you have. If you die, you drop your gems and the other team can grab them or your team can get them. But once one of the team has 10 gems between the team members, mm -hmm. a, a timer starts counting. Mm. And I think it's like 10 seconds is all. Maybe it's 20 or something. But okay. it starts counting. And during that time, if you survive and don't lose any of your gems, you win. That's how you win the match. 
So you don't win by kills, you don't win by dying, you don't or lose by dying or any of that. You lose by losing your gems or having less than 10. And if they if you're on the timer and they shoot you and you drop all, you know, five of your gems and they get them, the timer stops yeah. and now you got to try to get them back before your timer comes back. Right, right, right. So that's how so, you finish uh, the match is by having that timer count down. Do you move slower when you're carrying a bunch of gems versus if you're carrying just one gem? No, you move the same speed regardless. Uh, across the board, which is good because you don't. I, I think it would suck to feel yeah. like you had this disadvantage just because you had gems. Um, but you do have the disadvantage of having gems. Oh, and, well, you can't shoot because you're carrying. Well, gems, no, you right? can shoot. You can but do you can anything you'd want to do. It's just that you have gems, so now you are a target. <laughs> gotcha, you're you're okay. much more of a target than anybody else on your team. Or if you try to play it loose and and hide in the back back lanes, the guys in front might get attacked early killed and then they'll come after you and now you're on your own you're pretty defenseless uh there's high grass that you can hide in and they only see you if they're in it or if they shoot in there blindly and accidentally hit you then they'll know you're in there so if they go so inside of the grass now it's you know yeah. it's it's crazy but you can do a lot of duking and jiving and getting out of trouble by using this high grass the other problem with the grass though is eventually if it gets shot at enough the grass disappears and then you start losing grass as the match goes on, so it quits being an advantage. Lots of little tiny little details like this. The part that I think is like Battle Royale. So for all, everything I described there is like Capture the Flag and MOBA, kind of, right? Mm -hmm. The right. Battle Royale part, or more like the Fortnite part, is the out-of-game thing where you kind of have the same season pass sort of unlock mm -hmm. stuff as you go sure. way of playing the game, buying skins, you know, that that part of it and how they make their money is very Fortnite, mm -hmm. uh, and I really like it. It's really fun and exciting. I played a bunch of games with Nick, and we had a blast with it. The only real That's complaint. Cool. Oh, yep. go ahead. Oh, so uh, is it easy to get matched up with people on your friends list before you get thrown in with a bunch of randos? Uh, to be with somebody on your in your friends list, you need to team up with them and play. Uh, you have to do that deliberately. So I gotcha, have to go, gotcha, hey, Nick, gotcha. join me for this game. He joins, now we go play a game. So it's not going to automatically cool. pull them in. Uh, but you uh, you can do it pretty easy. We had we had teams easy. Here's the big complaint, though, because it has something to do with that. Uh, there were times where I was like single player in there, and it would put two people with me that were just randos. And the randos sometimes would be three totally different characters, but sometimes it would be two of us were the same character. And, and that's not a problem. But when you mm -hmm. go to make custom games, when it was just me, Carter, and Nick trying to play, because mm -hmm. Carter and I hadn't played as long as Nick, her and I only had one character unlocked, and it's the same character. Oh. Nick had an extra guy, and it says you can't play in teams with with the same character. And right, yet, right. yet in random games, it does that all the time. So it's a weird, funky thing that probably is, I wouldn't call it a bug, but it's a weird, I, they need to just fix that. That's dumb. Like, let us be the, the main people, because... If if not, when you go to play a game with a friend, if you're if that's your first game, you're immediately not going to be able to play with each other because you can't have the same guy. Mm -hmm. It's dumb, super dumb. I don't know why wow. they did that. So get in there. If you think you're going to want to play with other, play with other people, you know, get in there and start playing now. Yeah, unlock some dudes. <laughs> so unlock some characters. Exactly, yeah. and, and and in theory, you need to unlock three characters mm -hmm. to do that, so that you have the best chance of your friends having one of the right. other three. You know what I mean? It's real. Yeah, it's a yeah. funky thing they did with that. I don't understand it, but otherwise, very accessible, really easy to get into, super fun to play, and I totally dig it. Hmm. So I'm going to recommend wow. it. It's Brawl Stars. Brawl Stars out now for both Google Play and the uh, App Store, and also that's cross-play, so everybody's playing together. And I would I would say this just as a side note: this would easily, of all their games they've ever made, easily this one would translate really well to a console, to the Switch, to PS4, Xbox, PC, anything oh, with a controller. Would be great. It would be yeah. amazing on Switch. It would be incredible. That on is there. the one thing that that's tough to do because uh, is it you're do, using virtual joysticks? You're not tapping. Oh man, yeah, tapping to shoot and tapping to move. Yeah. Well, that this one doesn't. You don't tap in this one to move. It is I a virtual mean, joystick. Joystick, virtual joystick. But it still yeah, sucks. I'd much rather have the switch. Yeah, you want a real switch stick. Track. You want physical sticks, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. And that's always preferable. I mean, I can deal with it, but it's preferable. So, mm -hmm. uh, grab it, get it, and then Nintendo make a deal with them. Get that going. Right. All right, Brian. Exactly. What'd you bring? Cool. You uh, I'm bringing. Your favorite kind of game, Scott. Uh -huh. I'm bringing a uh, <laughs> tower defense game, Ooh. but not just any. So I'm like, all right, if we've got the 
people who like tower defense and the people who don't like tower defense Venn diagram, which has no overlap because you can't both like it and dislike it. Mm. Uh, you know what? Forget the Venn diagram. It's a spectrum. Okay. Yeah. And we've got you on one end. I don't like, I, you don't like uh, tower defense games. And then on the other end of that, we get people who do like tower defense games. Sure. I'm somewhere in the middle where it's got to be a really good tower defense game and, mm. and it's got to have other things that I like to make it playable, to make it something that I like. Yeah. This one does. And it's the sequel to a tower defense game that I really liked before called Kingdom Rush. Uh. And one of the things I loved about Kingdom Rush were, were the graphics, the very cool cartoony uh, style graphics of Kingdom Rush. Um, and this one's called Kingdom Rush Vengeance. You can actually uh, get to a website, kingdomrushvengeance.com, which uh, directs you to the App Store or Google Play to get the two different versions of this. But it is um, it is your standard uh, tower defense. You've got the paths to get through the uh, through the level, and you've got to place your towers on those paths and and figure out the best place to put this thing that shoots arrows because it's a lot faster. And this other thing where you've got a hut with three warriors that come out. Now, here's here's where this one differentiates from the. Um, the previous version, and for me, other tower defense games. Number one, you've got a hero. Mm. You start out with this big tanky hero dude, dwarf. You know, he he basically is a giant compared to all of your little uh, grunts that run around. And you can put him anywhere you want, move him around the whole playing field as much as you need to. It's like your World of Warcraft three. I'm sorry, not your World of Warcraft, your Warcraft three. Um, Arthas, that you can say, all right, you guys build that uh, barracks oh. and you uh, mine gold and i'm gonna run around here and kill things that come and attack yeah hero hero that's what hero his, his, uh, his, characters where they gotta go level up and do stuff separate sure right exactly yeah. um and you can build him up in different ways as as you gain experience you can kind of choose You've got a talent tree and you can kind of build him around that there's some good depth there you can um you can uh beef up your different towers mm -hmm. by using power-ups that you earn again as you play through this you're you're basically earning these points that you can use to build up your towers have some bombs that you can kind of use if people slip through and you want to you know last ditch before they get off the field you want to uh, clobber them um you can do that uh you've got a regular talent tree just for your mechanics game mechanics that you can do Ooh, you can spawn uh, minions that's, that's really cool slick. i just saw this in this video you make make little dudes that's right. Yeah. So you can actually have little minions that either pop out of a barracks mm -hmm. that you place on the field or your your hero can actually spawn minions that help him fight. Uh, and he can leave those minions there and then go fight somewhere else and spawn more minions there. So at the start of this, they um, showed a guy in a dump truck or like a bulldozer. Was it like, what's the story with that? This is the dude. I don't know. I haven't gotten to that level yet. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> and in one of the videos. Yeah, it looked like the intro. Like there was some guy out just working oh. in the working in the woods or something, and then suddenly something exploded, and he, he now he's back in time or something, or he's in this fantasy world, or I can't tell. Yeah, that must be. Yeah, that's that's uh, cut scene, beginning cut scene, and that's all you all you get on that. All right. I mean, this is once you're in the game, it is warriors, magicians, you know. Uh, uh, necromancers who can bring things back to life and stuff like that that, that are running through. But the uh, for me, like I said, the animation is just so tight on this and so clean and fun. Um, this is one of the, like I said, one of the better uh, uh, tower defense games I've ever played. And it takes a lot for me to like a tower defense game and stick with it. Yeah. Now, Ironhide, who makes this, are they make quality products that aren't just the, yeah, that aren't just uh, Tower Defense. Uh, I've had other games from them, and cool. I'm trying to find out what they work yeah, as I Ironhide remember. Ironhidegames.com. Curious myself what else they've done. Here we go, games. Ironhide Game Studios. They may. Make... It reminded me a little bit of that Battleheart, but I don't know if they're the guys who do Battleheart. Iron Marines. Oh, yeah, we've done. Uh, Iron I've, Marines, I've, that's the one. Yeah, that's a good one. I've recommended Iron Marines before. Yeah, they make Oh, good they've games. had a bunch of Kingdom Rush games. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, yeah, this Frontiers. is like. Frontiers. Like Origins. fifth or something, right? Fifth game yeah. in the series or something. Yeah. Clash of the Olympians. Huh. Yeah, they're into it. 
They like these clash. They they like to clash uh, with their kingdom rushes. <laughs> they do. Uh, they like to rush the kingdom. So free, anyway, obviously free. And uh, what do you buy in this thing? Do you pay for uh, it? no free. No, it's not freemium. You pay. Oh, I take that back. I bet you can buy. Well, let's see. Can you buy stuff? Yeah, you can. You can buy gems and stuff. Um, I believe it's free. Again, it's crazy how when you get one of these things, all of a sudden you can't look and see. Here we go. Hmm. If, it, if it costs anything, it's like two ninety nine or three ninety nine or something. It's uh, four ninety nine. Oh, that's not bad. That's in line no. with their previous stuff. And you don't have to wait for ads or, or you know watch a video to play another level or something. You pay four ninety nine, four ninety nine, and you've got full access to the whole game. You've just got those. If you want to buy gems, and it doesn't, it's not obnoxious about buying gems at all. That's why I wasn't even sure that they offered any freemium stuff. Yeah. Um, because it's it's uh, so uh, in, not insignificant, non intrusive. Sure. Um, it's got a four point nine out of five on the iTunes Store. Anyway, it's it's I think it's a really good game. It's a lot of fun. Nice. Well, and, if you like uh, Tower Defense, probably the best in the market. That brand or that uh, that, so. that series, yeah, I would I would agree with that, but it's in my top three least favorite genres. <laughs> what are the other two? Endless uh, Runners. Endless Runner and no, I actually like it. There's an Endless Runner like or two out there that are okay. Yeah. Um. So I don't complain about those. Uh. The the one the other one I don't like is. Oh, Scott, what are you doing? Why can't you think of it all of a sudden? It's this, and oh, Dating Sims. No interest oh, well, in a dating sure. sim at all. Sure. I've played a few, and I hate them. Uh, sure. And then third, probably just yet another, and especially on mobile, like yet another uh, three or four party uh, RPG where you level up your oh, guy yeah. and collect more of them, and it's just too much the same. They're all doing the same yeah. thing. So yeah, for a while the the you know it's like there's a there's a genre that I get into, and then it's like all of a sudden so many games come out with it and it just gets boring like the um the farmville style or the yeah. uh fallout shelter great when it first came out and yeah. then just got so repetitive and grindy and then there were like all these other versions are like all right i'll try this new version oh same damn thing oh yeah. but this one over here oh same damn thing yeah bugs me so those are those are the three i avoid but i 100 percent think it's cool if people are into tower defense and they should get their tower defense game <laughs> so there sure, you go sure all right, well done. Uh, it's time for us to uh, take a quick dive into these right here. And you can always follow me on Twitter. These are the uh, Twitter questions that you've asked since last week, and uh, they come to us the Ask TMS hashtag. We're going to answer a few of these right here on the show. Brian, I don't want to shock you or anything, but Peter Fisher has our first question. Are you ready? What? I know. I should have made a wager. You should have. I should have put money on that. I should have played that gif of you slapping yourself in the face that I, that I did. <laughs> um, it says here... Uh, where is it? You commented about documentaries ending uh, too soon. Have there been ones that seem to go on too long? Mm. Well, I'm sure there are, but I couldn't tell you. I mean, I like a long documentary. I like a series like Ken, mm. all the Ken Burns making stuff. Making Murderer. Sure, yeah. Making Murderer is great. Um, making a Murderer kind of, season two kind of left you hanging, but not. it's not that it ended too soon. It's just that we don't have more information yet, so you right. kind of had to end right. it. Um but yeah, I don't, I don't like him to end too soon. I'd like as much info as you can. Um, that'd be good. Mm -hmm. Jay DeStefano says, what's your best and worst frozen food items? This is easy. Best and worst frozen food items. Yep. I totally know what this would be for me. Huh. Here, while right. you're thinking. Yeah, you go first. Pizza roll's like, my favorite. Love a good pizza roll. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's what we're talking about. Like, uh, you know, your tombstone pizzas or your Mrs. Gorton's fish sticks or whatever. <laughs> yeah, and you just named the one I like the least is fish sticks. Can't do the fish sticks. Fish sticks. sticks. Yeah, those things seem to get freezer burn faster than anything, right? Yeah, they're real bad. Not a fan. What do you um, uh, What do you like or not like? I'm not a fan of those Michelina's um, cardboard meals. Oh, yeah. They have a really pretty picture of Italian food on the front, uh -huh. and then you, you cook it, and... You can put that thing in the microwave for two or three minutes even further than the time they recommend cooking it, yeah. and the center will still be, like, a chunk of ice. Yeah, don't <laughs> like those either. That's my least favorite. Um, Good call. Number one favorite, well, um, Barry Folks, listener of this show and the Pokemon Go podcast and a few other shows, sent me some uh, Lou Malnati's pizzas from Chicago. I mean, these are the deep, deep dish lasagna with a crust kind of pizzas. Yeah. 
and frozen or not, you know, these things are awesome. Once you bake them, they are fantastic. Can you so, only get them in Chicago? Can you get them anywhere else? You can only you can get yeah, you can you can only get them in Chicago, but you can have them shipped anywhere. So, mm. you can uh you can get the frozen ones shipped to you in in Utah. That sounds really good. I may have they to are really, grab really some good, of those. And I can't have it anymore. <laughs> yes. Yeah, not for a while. Not for a while. Not this week anyway. Nope, not this week. This is a this is a be good week. Uh here's one. John Tazarek says, would you rather throw your lower back out or suck a big hairy toe? Um, <laughs> do I get to choose the cleanliness Why is that of the a choice? Well, oh my it, God. if I get to choose how clean the toe is, maybe I go the toe. But what is it also? I don't, how long do I have to suck it? What do you mean by suck it? Like, there's a lot right, of questions here. How long here. will I have the back pain? Yeah. Like, there's a lot of questions. I, I think because of lack of details, I'm going to say I'll take the back pain because I know it's temporary. I'll never be able to wash that toe out of my mouth. I can tell you that. Yeah. Ugh. 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 Well, I mean, what would you do, Brian? What do you want? Coccyx or a toe in your mouth? <sighs> well, I'm certainly not. Uh, oh, yeah. The coccyx pain was horrible because it lasted almost a year. Yeah. And having to sit on a plane, I'd take that. I would suck the hairy toe. Would you? But what yeah. if somebody said, what if you said you had to suck it for three hours straight? Well. <laughs> And it had to be a dirty hobo toe that's all sweaty. Oh, like, well, forget it. I mean, if, okay. again, deciding on the cleanliness of the toe, uh, <laughs> we know that, that's key, the cleanliness. We know that it's cleanliness. hairy is the main thing. That's the main right. thing so we know about it's probably not a lady's toe. <laughs> no. Although I did, uh, I knew somebody with hairy lady toes. Who was it? Some. I'm not going to say her name, but I know a girl with hairy lady toes. She had really? a little hair okay. on her knuckles. It was gross. Anyway, uh, I didn't suck her toe. I just know I saw their toes, okay? <laughs> right. Um, okay. What do you think a of Pitbull? Horrible Pit question. <laughs> yeah, it's a very bad question. Uh, Matt Brown says, what do you think of Pitbull's new cover of Africa? My suspicions is it's going to make you want to jam a pencil in your ears. I heard about it, but I have not heard it yet. Um, there was a lot of talk on Twitter this morning about it. Have you heard it yet? I have not had no idea this even was a thing. Maybe we can 2018 get is the year of covering, covering Africa because I'm... I'm right now going through all of the covers of 2018 to narrow it down for the um, the countdown. The next mm -hmm. two episodes of Coverville will be the top 40 songs of the year, top 40 covers of the year. Mm -hmm. And it's funny how everybody, Scott Bradley's Postmodern Jukebox, Weezer, um, uh, who else did covers of Africa? Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, no, that's Scott Bradley. Yeah, somebody from the All ATX uh, cover album uh, did a cover of Africa. It's like everybody had to do a cover of Africa this year. Yeah. Um, but I've not heard Pitbulls. If it's, it's true to Pitbulls' sound, yeah, which is horrible. Yeah. But if it's true to his sound, then it's a then it's a cover I'd appreciate, but probably not like. It's, it's uh, <laughs> the, the reason this is happening. I guess it's in the Aquaman movie. It's in the soundtrack. Really? Yeah. What a weird. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, well, let's get a taste of it here. Let's see what yeah. this is here. Hold on. You tried to get rid of me. Okay. But from ocean oh, I, already to hate it. I know, I hate it already, too. They're gonna have to deal with me. Okay. But... I've been overlooked, slept on, stepped on, left for dead, always against all eyes like Pac said. I'm the living great Gatsby. I don't know. It's all, it's all right. It's okay. Is it even a, it's not even a cover of Africa. It just happens to sample the, the uh the chord progression from africa well, the do 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 it may do more i don't hear it though let's see yeah i don't know if oh ria apparently ria kicks in because she's featured on here or i'm sorry feet feet she's feet, feet ria feet ria would you, so, would you suck on ria's feet yeah so ria <laughs> I mean, again, cleanliness is, is the key. Right. How clean is your toe? Did I get to witness the cleaning of the toe? I have a lot. The toe thing has serious questions. I can't just proceed yeah. sight unseen on the toe issue. Anyway. And just the fact that Rhea, uh, the last, it's the last two syllables from diarrhea. It just is not a feat that I'm going to want to put in my yeah. mouth. Yeah, feet Rhea is what that's called. Diarrhea Perlman. Oh, that's a good one. That's why he left. That's why they're not together anymore. That's why they're not together anymore. <laughs> it's a diarrhea Perlman. It's short for diarrhea. <laughs> um, I mean, I like the, I didn't like what I just heard, but I like Africa, so it's hard for me not to like the chord yeah. that was being played. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Burp, 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 it's burp, a burp. note from me. Yeah, it's a big <laughs> note from me. 
<laughs> uh, Nick Ruber, is jelly a condiment? Oh, that's a good question. Um, um, what would you say about that? Let's see. This is hard. I don't know. It is. I mean, uh, does it does it complement more than just toast? Like, what else do you put jelly? Like, you say, oh, let me, uh, you know, we've got a we've got a condiment basket that's got your mustard, your ketchup, and your jelly on here for all of your food. Mm. Is there any other food that you would put jelly on, or is it just really of a, a like you get your toast with or without jelly? It's toast. You know? It's Melba toast. It's small cracker type items. But it's all kind of bread, you know, like bread form. Yeah. So I would say no, because, hmm. you know, like ketchup, you might do on your fries. You might do it on your burger. You're going to do it on your, your, I don't know, you're with your onion rings or something like that. Whereas jelly is just going to go on bread. Well, let's see <laughs> what the official de definition is of condiment. You ready for this? Sure. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Condiments can be defined as things that are added to food to give it more flavor. They usually take the form of sauces, dips, or spreads. For example, jelly and jam are usually considered condiments, mm. but peanut butter is not. Likewise, salsa is usually considered a condiment, while guacamole is not. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. According to Wonder Wonderpolis Wonderopolis rather dot org. Which oh, apparently is, so they uh, bought a domain, so they become the official. Yeah, they have a domain and a website. Whether a condiment or not condiment. Yeah, this is so true. <laughs> Here, here's United States condiments. Um. Oh, I mean, interesting. Yes. Hold on a second. Where's if you the... open it up to jelly, it seems like you have to open it up to all these other things that are, that are not multi-purpose. I would for agree. Me, for maybe that's my definition of a condiment. It has to be usable, primarily on more than one thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would also like to point out that it's not listed in the Wikipedia listing of condiments, but they also say it's a very dynamic list with, sure. very, you know, it's it's going to jump around. But you got things I mean, like... you can put jelly on anything. And, and you, you know, you get your, uh, back in the days of Bennigan's, when you got your Monte Cristo deep fried sandwich, oh, yeah. it would come with a side of jelly. That's right. You dip it into the raspberry jelly you stuff. You dip it strawberry. in jelly. And I guess if you go to Ikea and get the uh, meatballs, it comes with a side of jelly. The, oh, yeah. Lingonberry jelly. So mm. maybe um maybe it's uh, if if by if my rule is condiment has to be usable with more than one food item, then uh, then I guess jelly is a condiment. Would you call maple syrup a condiment? Ooh, no, I would not. See, and this it's... list does. They, in fact, this list says not only maple syrup. This says lettuce is a com is a condiment. <laughs> I think that's BS. All right. Well, maple syrup. I mean, I put pancakes and uh, waffles kind of in the same arena. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the waffle and like, cake arena. Not... <laughs> What's that? It's, they put it in the waffle arena. I love the idea of a waffle arena. The waffle arena. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, jeez. <laughs> Only one pressed bread. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I mean, if you're gonna say if you're gonna say that that jelly's a condiment, you kind of do have to open it up to crap like lettuce and sliced tomato and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Pickles so. as well it says here. Olive oil, but onion. Pickles, I would say, is a condiment. Sure. sure. Uh, peanut butter on this list says it is. Pepper mm. jelly, they do include, but they don't include regular other kinds of jelly. Uh, soy sauce. Let's see. White pepper. What's XO sauce? What the hell's that? I don't know. Uh, XO sauce, a <laughs> spicy seafood sauce from Hong Kong. It was commonly used. Mm. Oh, it's probably pronounced Zo or Yo or something. Right. Cho sauce or something like that. Yeah. Ooh, that looks good. <laughs> I haven't eaten very Looks much like today. like HP sauce. HP. The makers of yes, fine could, laser printers. That's no? right. Could you give me some of that HP sauce, please? Give me some HP. How many pages per minute does it do? <laughs> I need some more toner for my HP yeah, sauce. Yeah, is the toner more expensive than the printer? Because not <laughs> And no sale. HP sauce. And HP. Oh, that just, that just got worse. It did. I didn't even want to think about it. <laughs> I'm never going to repeat that again. Here's one from The Bun Is In Your Mind. Amazing Toaster is the actual name. Says, is Rusty still in the Navy? Is Rusty, uh, was Rusty the, you mean Rusty Griswold? Did he go in the Navy? Uh, no. That's no. gotta be a song. Is it a song? Is Rusty still in the Navy? Still in the Navy. I know that, uh, he's chatting with Davey, who's still in the Navy and probably will be for life. That's a piano man, hmm. but I can't think of is Rusty still in the Navy? Yeah, I don't know what that <laughs> it's is. It's gotta be a song reference or something. It must be. He's freaking me out here. I don't know what it is. 
Rusty in the Navy. <laughs> oh, it is it is a National Lampoon's uh, Christmas oh. Vacation. Oh, quote. really? Oh, it's the it's the lady with the uh, the cat in the box. Is Rusty <laughs> still in the Navy? <laughs> oh, clock is your house on fire, clock. You know who that is, don't you know? You know who that lady is. That's uh uh, that's not uh, walk towards the light, Carol Ann lady, mm. is it? No, she's she is the voice of Betty Boop. She was the voice actress who did Betty Boop for that's right. decades. That's right. Here you go. Yeah. Here you go, Scott. Play right. this. Play this little clip right here. Okay. Oops, where, where, I have to hit enter. There you go. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, Discord. Up? Discord. Okay. I'm playing it now. Here we go. Let's see if they'll shut us down for this one. Okay, isn't it? Not Trusty right. still in the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's her. That's Betty Boop, ladies and that's gentlemen. That's Betty Boop. That's very cool. Yeah. Aunt, right. Aunt Bethany. Oh, Aunt Bethany. And they had the cat in the box, and <laughs> yes, exactly. Don't eat that Jello mold because there's cat hair in it. <laughs> Say the blessing. Oh, that hurt my back. The blessing. The blessing. <laughs> <laughs> I need to watch that this weekend. I do too. Oh, I do Done. too. That's what I'm gonna oh. do. Oh. Good old William Hickey. I got in a William Hickey position there, and it made my back hurt. All right, um, <laughs> which DC? Or sorry, which supervillain, uh, DC or Marvel, would you rather have in the White House? Oh, which supervillain? <laughs> which supervillain, either DC or Marvel, would you rather have in the White House? Um, rather have than the current than the current the White House, or <laughs> than the current non-connected to a major comics publishing villain that but is in there today. <laughs> yeah, um, I'd probably go like. Uh, 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 I think Doctor Doom because he's he, Doctor Doom's Ooh. pretty cool, you know. I, I mean, you never heard the Latvians complain about him, right? No, the Latvians seem fine, or whatever they're called. Um, Latvians. The uh, Joker is already there. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, no kidding. Chat I mean, Lex Luthor. Uh, you know, again, you've got uh, you got problems that come with it. Uh, Modok. Oh yeah, <laughs> Modok, dude. <laughs> I mean, we kind of have that now, but Modoc. We got the big orange hey, little hands. <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be great. I'm gonna get another email from the one guy that emails anytime anything any, remotely Trump or Lady comes up. He gets yeah. he gets triggered. He gets all snowflaked when I bring it up, and I and I find find that kind of funny because it used to be the flip. Everybody would would uh, be the other way. They all called called everybody else snowflakes. But no, this one guy always sends me a thing. He goes, "I love your content. I've been listening for years, but." You just got to stop dragging Trump through the mud. <laughs> and my answer to that is, I'm just answering a question on Twitter here. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Would Magneto be a good uh, president for a while? He was He was good. And he was, uh, you know, he saw... He has decent intentions. He does, except he just wants... He wants... He doesn't want equality for humans and mutants. He wants superiority for mutants over humans. Yeah. I mean, I think I'd probably go... I'd probably go him over most, though, because at least he's got some benevolent factors. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. Uh, he may have some bad ideas, but we could agree to disagree sort of stuff. And <laughs> plus, he would really jack up any kind of metal things, so that's no good. Oh, yeah, he's out because yeah. he's not born in America. Not born in America. Yeah, yeah. so that's, the, America that's what rules Magneto out. <laughs> yeah, and Doctor, and Doctor Doom, he can't. So and Doctor Doom. Let's go Well, with, no, I think... Uh, Unless he's an angry he blogger. American. Is he an angry blogger? <laughs> oh, God. No, isn't uh, Victor Von Doom... He wasn't born in Latveria. After after he uh, was disfigured in the uh, the science experiment, then he went and did the you know created his metal outfit and then went to Latveria, right? Yeah, let's see. He was born... Oh, no, it says right here. He was born in a Romania camp outside oh, of Hazekstadt, okay. Latveria. Uh... All right. Okay, if that's the true origin, I don't know. So I'm sure, just this sure. comic vine says that, or the Marvel Wiki actually says that. Okay, so so he's out. Uh, Doc yeah. o Doc Ock seems like he had some decent, had some okay stuff going on in his head. Sometimes. Yikes! I don't know. Doc Ock, Green Goblin. There's there's some mental instability there. Mm. Can we say Galactus? Yeah, dude. <laughs> He can just eat other planets. It won't bother ours. Exactly. Yeah. Right, exactly. As long as he's the president of our planet, I feel like we're safe. Okay. I'm in. This is it. <laughs> Brian's got the answer. We've had it all Not along. born in America, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> but who's going to run against him? <laughs> um, all right. Final question. This is a very interesting one. 
should I do this one? Hold on. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll do it. All right, Brian. This is from John yeah. Tazarek, and he says this. Taz the man on Twitter. Brian has one hour to hide a golf ball anywhere in his home. Scott then has 30 minutes to find it. So quite just at home. Yeah. If he finds it within the allotted uh, time or in the amount of time of 30 minutes, Scott wins a million dollars. If not, Brian wins the money. Where do you hide the golf ball? And uh, it says no sharing the money options. Too easy. I guess he just means this is just the, this way or the highway. You either find it and I win, or I don't, and you and you keep the million dollars, or you get the million dollars. Right. So right. where would you hide got, that? Uh, how long do you have? You have an hour to I find it. I have a it? half an hour to find it. You half have an, an hour, hour to hide it. I have an hour to hide it. Yeah. So we have ninety um, minutes total. You you have the first hour. I have thirty minutes to find it. So clearly, I would hide it with something that would be your kryptonite. So it would. Uh, in your, in your butthole, where... right up your own butthole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do you do this in 288 characters? Um, let's see. Yeah, where, where would I? I mean, it would absolutely have to be somewhere where you would not look for it. Would it be... Uh, I wouldn't look up your butthole. Well, I know you wouldn't, but I, would not, I wouldn't want to put it up my butthole. <laughs> But if it, million million dollars, dollars, if it meant a million dollars, if it meant a million dollars, you might. Okay. You might. I mean, that seems too easy because you know anybody. It, that's not even specific to us, really. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Um, okay. Uh, let's say that the the bodies are off. You have to hide it in the structure. Right. Um, Just because you're in the house doesn't mean it's in the house because you could leave the house. So that's the one rule. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess, I guess, uh, in the. Uh, the drain of the toilet or something where you could like see the, it if you dug in there. Or, I like don't the, know. That's, like the tank horrible. thing. Yeah, this is bad. Because if I had a half an hour, I could really rifle through that your house. Yeah, exactly. I think litter if it box, was me. Kitty litter box that might with be, all the turds. Yeah, maybe. That's a, that's a kryptonite. You know what you might do? You might do a security by obscurity and hide it within a hundred other golf balls. <laughs> That's great. That's yeah. a really good one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you can only take one. I can't walk out of there with all the balls. So that's right. that's how I do it. There be some mark to, to differentiate this golf ball from all the other golf balls. Perfect. But uh, really what I would do is like hide a thousand golf balls all around the house. Yeah. Instead of just, you know. You, <laughs> you right away. I, I found one behind the TV, you, you guys. It was exactly. right behind the TV. <laughs> I win. You'd waste so much time running back and forth to the to the finish line to say, nope, that's not the one. Oh, I'll run back. Yeah, you can see why. I'm imagining how this all works. It just gets way more complicated the more you think about it. Because yeah. you could go nuts, and so could I with the finding. I all could right. I could come in there and, oh, yeah. It could be bad. <laughs> Let's hope this never happens. All right. Uh, one final question from Michael Fahey, who says, your favorite album and song of 2018, Brian, what do you pick? What are you giving it to? Ooh. Or does this give something away Dang. from one of your films? No, no, it doesn't. Things? It doesn't okay. uh, give anything away. All right. Um, yes, it is the uh, it is the um, Noah Hawley and Jeff Russo soundtrack to Legion that oh. came out this year. Oh, and it's a bunch of really bizarre, cool covers. Um, I don't know if it's Noah Hawley on vocals, the showrunner of Legion, but it's he's credited as the artist. And I think Jeff Russo is the musician. Um, they do a cover on there of uh, uh, Behind Blue Eyes that's really, really good. Let's see. It's always blue songs from... That's it. Yeah, it's always it. blue songs from Legion. Yeah. There it is. Okay, I'm all. I'm going to get into this. Go check that. Listen to that soundtrack. You'll be blown away. It's really, really good. Oh, Behind Blue Eyes. There's that. Yeah. With uh, Dan Burning Stevens. Down the House. Oh, it does say Superman. Dan Stevens. Or no, Noah Hawley. Oh, yeah. Noah Hawley is listed yeah. as the artist. And then yeah. And then they got Dan Stevens singing part of that one. Right. I can't believe I'm going to listen to that. I'm going to, though. You got to listen to it. It's okay. Good. I'm in. Uh, ask him. you? What's favorite oh, album? Uh, um, I don't know. I don't think I've followed it close enough. You know what I really like, but I don't know if it's from this year. I really like the that Post Malone song that's in the new Spider-Man thing. Um, hmm. Sunflower is the song. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me look and see. Here it is. Sunflower. What's the... T what's the... You'll know this because... It is to say I keep a check. She was a bad man. Nevertheless. You know the one. I do, yeah. Um yep. it's from Yeah, no, this is the is it this year? 
I can't tell what year this is. Post Malone, Post Malone's the guy who did uh, Congratulations, right? Oh, I don't know. Is it? Oh, yeah, it is. O- October 18th, 2018, Post Malone, Sunflower for Spider-Man, Into the Spider-Verse. I think that single's really good. And so I guess that's my single as far as my album goes. I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. I can't think of anything. Don't say gag lemonade. That stuff's interesting. He's all right. <laughs> I know he's he's a big goober with too many weird tattoos that look bad. I get it. I understand everyone's got the problems with the guy in this life. <laughs> but he has a unique, interesting sound. I'm going to give him that. He's talented sure, and is interesting. Sure. So come on now. That song is gross. Come on. What? What? You're not all, you're all acting older than me now. Oh, the new Crystal Method album. That's it. That's my album. Oh. Thanks for the reminding. Yeah. The reminder, uh, yeah. Zeros. The Cat Power cover of, uh, oh. of Rihanna's Stay is really good, too. Oh, yeah, that is pretty good. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway. I yeah, there's going to be a lot to choose from. Plus, Post Malone's really nice and, like, charitable and, like, a seems like an actual kind soul, which we could use more of in, in the entertainment business. Okay? Agreed. Leave Agreed. him alone. Peace. Leave Post Malone alone. <laughs> Leave Post Malone alone. It's Post Alone. <laughs> All right, Carl Malone say I like Post Malone. All right, we're gonna do a um, <laughs> we're gonna do a thing where we're done. That's now we're done. This oh, is where okay. we're done. This we're is the done. part where we're done. And I, I just want to tell everybody that we'll be back next week for the full week of shows. Nope. With the exception of uh, <laughs> Friday, Friday. <laughs> but we'll be here Monday through Thursday. We will be here for that. That's right, exactly. Um, <laughs> full week shows. Nope. <laughs> oops. Yeah, I'm out of town for that weekend and for the Thanksgiving. Or, uh, sorry, Christmas weekend. Christmas and then yeah, um, so yeah, but we'll be back, the back next week. But so Boxing Day, Wednesday, right? Yeah. Yeah, we'll be back the following Wednesday and Thursday, mm-hmm. and then probably Friday because I'm not leaving that town for that. Or mm-hmm. you're not either, right? We're here. Nope. Nope. So we yep, should be here. here for normal stuff there. Yeah. Um, that's it. Oh, run, jump, cool. stomp. But next, week, but next yeah. week, Monday through Thursday. So don't worry. Monday through Thursday. Yeah, it's all good. Monday through Thursday. We got good it's stuff. We're going to play our year, our best end of year things. Oh, maybe we'll save those for the next week. But those are coming from Jamie. They're amazing. I've heard. I haven't heard them. I don't know if they're good. I'm sure they are. But they're supposed to be all the dumb stuff Brian and I said throughout the year. And we have one for me and one for Brian. It's awesome. So that's all coming up. And... Oh, my back hurts. Uh, we may have a film sack, but we don't know yet because we're trying to figure it out. We don't know. We're, we Our schedules are jacked. And that's it, I think, for now. I that's feel like it. I'm supposed to say something else, and I've forgotten what it is. I can't think of what it is. I didn't oh, have anything I, else to say. I can't think of what it is. Anyway, yeah. I'm going to go put some ice on my back. Brian, will you please get I'm going to go here? look at my 3D print. <laughs> you should do that. What song can you play while you do it? Uh, here's the song that people will listen to and pretend that it's while I'm doing it. Uh, <laughs> while I'm doing Whoa. it. Uh, and my screen, my my Google Doc just reset. Thank you for that. Okay, here we go. Good job, Google. Um, I think, yes. Here we for Pete's sake. Here we go. All right. Glenn Roden said, hey there, sexy and bodacious. Another year has passed and we've come around again to celebrate the birthday of an amazing person. Through all the ups and downs in my life over the past year, she's always been there with a kind word, an uplifting smile, a joyous laugh, or a comforting hug. Mm. I would simply like to tell her thank you. Thank you for all you do and all that you are. So Brian, if you'd be so kind, could you please play a cover of The Smiths Asleep, a beautiful song for a beautiful lady. And as always, Scott and Brian, may you and your families have a wonderful holiday season. May your 2019 be the best year ever. Aww. Have fun. Signed, Glenn. No. Oh, no, no clips, no sounds to play, no phasers, ships phasers to test, anything like that. Just, nope. just, a just nice have song. a good day. Yeah. Kind of thing, sure. Uh, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to play a cover of that. Uh, the one I decided to go with, and he, I think he might have even wanted to hear the original, but that's not how this works. The one I decided to go with is the cover that came from great soundtrack, <clears throat> horrible movie, came out in 2011. <laughs> Sucker Punch, fight me on it. <laughs> it's Zach a Snyder, bad uh, movie, dude. Really bad. Yeah, really bad movie. Had potential and was so beautiful visually, yeah. but had no substance. Uh, yeah. But had a great soundtrack. Emily Browning. Actress Emily Browning actually recorded this cover of Asleep by the Smiths. Uh, I think she's the main actress in that film, if I remember correctly, the main doll in the dollhouse. Mm. Uh, Emily Browning and her cover of the Smiths, Asleep. All right, here it is. We'll see you guys on Monday. Have a great weekend. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at (laughs) frogpants.com. Green Needle. Green Needle.